Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. Dive into three more true and compelling encounters with parallel universes. Follow Simone as she grapples with memories from two incompatible yet seemingly coexistent lives. Delve into Ava Clark's vivid dreams that blur the boundaries between wakefulness and an alternate existence. And accompany Maria Maritello as the mundane details of her everyday life are subtly yet unmistakably altered. Such accounts challenge our understanding of human existence and make us wonder if there are other versions of ourselves out there that under the right circumstances may be accessed. Parallel Lives Three years ago in 2020, Simone Cohen found herself grappling with a perplexing question. Did she come from a parallel universe, or was she losing her grasp on reality? The question haunted her in light of some recent eerie events. Although in truth these peculiar occurrences had been transpiring for weeks, she hadn't given them much thought until now. The first peculiar incident involved a conversation with her cousin regarding various viruses and illnesses, a topic spurred on by the recent emergence of the pandemic. They joked about the childhood illnesses that her cousin had miraculously avoided when seemingly everyone else at school had caught them. During this conversation, Simone brought up the time when her cousin contracted chickenpox, leading to an outbreak in her father's office, where Simone's mother also worked. Both Simone and her mother had remained uninfected, but to Simone's astonishment, her cousin and uncle both vehemently denied any memory of such an event happening. However, Simone's mother, who had handled the office payroll and was thus able to recall a significant portion of the staff calling in sick, corroborated Simone's recollection. This incident occurred when Simone was around 10 or 11 years old. Later that same week, during one of her and her husband's late-night conversations, he mentioned friends they had known when they were younger. However, Simone corrected him, emphasising that she'd been mostly friendless during her childhood until she befriended a girl in the final year of middle school. She recounted tales of this friend and another girl she referred to, rather unfondly, as the sociopath. Midway through the story, Simone was struck by a realisation that two mutually exclusive memories from the same summer after middle school existed in her mind. In one, she had spent time with the first girl, and in the other, she was with the sociopath. Both memories felt equally real, vivid and detailed, yet each culminated in distinct outcomes. Simone had reconnected with the sociopath about a decade earlier, and she recalled spending that particular summer with Simone, but not the other girl. Their renewed friendship was short-lived, as the woman's psychological issues had only intensified over the years. Simone had always been certain about particular facets of her past, but recent events left her questioning her recollections. She remembered losing touch with a childhood friend, whom we'll call Girl A, when she moved back to Texas. Simone recalled exchanging letters for months, each one which she vividly remembered bearing a Texas postmark. However, a recent online search revealed a jarring inconsistency. Girl A had never left town. Instead, she had married a local man and even lived in her father's old house for some time. This new information was validated by an arrest record Simone stumbled upon. More perplexingly, Girl A had appeared in every yearbook for their local high school. While Simone was homeschooled and didn't appear in these yearbooks, she had another friend, Girl B, who attended the school. Girl B had once mentioned that Girl A had relocated, hence her absence. This information further confused matters when Simone remembered hearing about Girl B's tragic death serving in Afghanistan, leaving behind a child. Yet Simone was sure she had seen Girl B just a couple of years earlier strolling near her old home. 
She'd brushed it off then, assuming it was one of Girl B's sisters, but none of them resembled Girl B. When she sought confirmation from her mother, she was met with bewilderment. Her mother had no memory of Girl B's death. Amid the tumultuous background of a global pandemic, Simone found herself in the throes of a profound existential crisis, questioning every memory she had ever held dear. The anomalies didn't end there. Over the years, people recounted instances where Simone had acted or spoken in ways that were alien to her usual behaviour. More jarringly, she had no recollection of such incidents. A particularly poignant memory from her mother added another layer to the puzzle. Simone's supposed insistence on getting a guinea pig as a child. This recollection baffled Simone. Not only had she always wanted a rabbit for as long as she could remember, she had also had an aversion to guinea pigs, particularly as she couldn't stand the noise they made. The discrepancy between her memories and her mother's recollections left her more unsettled than ever. For years, peculiar events have unfolded around Simone which have continued to perplex her. A recent incident involved her husband who reminded her of a conversation they had shared. However, not only could Simone not recall having it, the opinions she allegedly expressed seemed utterly alien to her. At the age of 26, Simone's doctors prescribed her a new medication which unfortunately led to some adverse reactions. She began experiencing blackouts, finding herself in unfamiliar places without any recollection of how she arrived there. She would always have with her her phone, wallet and keys, but absolutely no memory of leaving the house. On one terrifying occasion, she even regained consciousness while driving on a highway. Her doctor at the time suspected that the medication might be causing a brain lesion, leading to her blackouts and memory lapses. Simone distinctly recall undergoing a brain scan. Yet when she accessed her extensive medical records online, there was no mention of this scan or the adverse reaction to the medication. As Simone delved deeper into these puzzling memories, her concerns escalated. She grappled with two possible explanations. Either her mind was betraying her, or she had been intermittently transitioning between two alternate realities her entire life. There were times Simone doubted if she even belonged to this dimension. She manifested allergies and reactions that, as per her physicians, were unique. She suffered from a chronic pain disorder that baffled countless specialists, including one who consulted a reputed expert from the UK. Her past held memories from her childhood that others vehemently denied ever occurred. Some of these memories were so traumatic that she had sought therapy to process them. Another mystery was her apparent lack of any memories prior to the age of six. This particular void always gnawed at her, even during her childhood. Countless other bewildering discrepancies had plagued Simone's life, but the essence was clear. Her life was riddled with conflicting memories that defied explanation. A lost love never found. Ava Clark would often awaken with a deep sense of longing for someone she had never met. She would dream vividly of a man she believed she had once dated, though they had never crossed paths in reality. The recurrent dreams seemed to revolve around their breakup and the ensuing emptiness she felt. Within the dream, acquaintances would mention chance encounters with him, sharing descriptions of their conversations about her and the unfortunate manner of their separation. In the midst of the dream, Ava would sift through photographs and text messages exchanged with this mystery man. The realism was such that, upon wakening, she would instinctively search her phone for those very messages, struggling to determine if he was a fragment of her dreams or a forgotten part of her real-life past. The vivid memories of his words and sentiments in the dream realm bled into her waking hours, intensifying her confusion. Moreover, these dreams weren't set in a distant past, so they certainly weren't recollections of a past life either, if such a thing existed, as there was modern technology involved. 
Ava would scroll through messages on a device that resembled an iPhone, yet its feel was distinctly different. After many such dreams, a name finally surfaced for this mysterious figure. Nick. In a recent dream, an unfamiliar face approached Ava, claiming Nick had asked about her, expressing regret over their split. The name resonated with her and the heartache felt distinctly real. Yet upon waking and fruitlessly searching for Nick's messages on her phone, the stark reality set in. He was a figment of her dreams. Though she couldn't recall his features upon waking, a deep sense of loss persisted. Ava grappled with the paradox of missing someone she had never truly met. However, the possibility soon began to dawn with her wondering if, perhaps, they were connected in some alternate universe. Almost the same. A year ago, in 2022, something unusual happened. For Maria Maritello, the day felt strangely off. She had always kept her headphones in her purse, which she had left in her car the previous day. Yet, upon waking, she found them resting on the couch. Although this could be dismissed as mere forgetfulness, what followed couldn't. The previous day, Maria distinctly remembered having exactly $9 in cash in her wallet. After retrieving $3 for some vending machine snacks at work, she should have been left with $6. However, while deciding whether to buy coffee the next morning and checking her wallet, she found the original $9. Puzzled and somewhat unnerved, she shared the strange experience with her husband and sister, the only two people she trusted not to dismiss her concerns. Intriguingly, both posed the same question. Are you sure it wasn't a dream? An eerily symmetrical response which only served to unnerve her even further. But this was only the beginning, as soon other inconsistencies started to present themselves. Maria felt like she was teetering on the edge of sanity, as subtle discrepancies in her surroundings began to manifest. The colours of her office building seemed to change. The typical sounds her in-need-of-service car made seemed to stop, and the behaviour of her husband and sister seemed to be subtly yet noticeably off. It wasn't a complete deviation from their normal behaviour, but enough to be unsettling. Struggling to describe the sensation, Maria wondered if others had ever experienced such a shift, where everything was almost the same, but with minute differences present, to make someone question the life they thought they knew.